In this lesson, we're going to discuss how we can use the box modeling methods and techniques on different primitives. All right, so I want to clear one thing up before we continue to move forward. I want to clear up that the box modeling method is not um, meant to only be a technique that you use on shapes like boxes. Okay, that's, that's not the uh, correct term to use. Box modeling is uh, about creating a primitive and using that to get your largest forms and then build down into the smaller forms. So we could use cylinders and things like that to uh, create the shapes that we want. We don't have to start out with boxes. So to kind of demonstrate how this works, uh, we're going to create the mounts for the lid uh, on the dumpster itself. Okay, so to get started with this, let's go ahead and go to our create panel and I'm going to use a cylinder. So I'm going to switch to the left view or the front view by hitting F on the keyboard. And here we're just going to drag in just a simple cylinder. Okay. And make sure that you drag out the height as well. Seeing how we are in the orthographic view, we need to make sure that we left click one more time to finalize that height. Now you can right click to end that cylinder creation. Now let's go to our perspective view by hitting P and let's move this into position. So to get started with this, let's just put it right on the very edge of our dumpster here. And I just hit T on the keyboard to go to our top view. And I'm going to put it somewhere right around here, okay, right on the other side of that line there. So once we've done that, let's hit Z so we can zoom in on this object. And we'll go to our modify panel. And let's get rid of those height segments. We don't necessarily need those at this point. Now, normally with box modeling method, I always take my segments down to one. So that way I don't have anything extra to deal with. Okay, I always build up as I go. So now that we have this, let's make sure that we have enough sides to make this look round. So we'll go up to 16 sides here. So looking at this, um, we could probably uh, drop that down a little bit because um, it really depends on the model that you're building. So this particular model is not uh, what I would consider a hero model. This is not something that's going to be fully on screen and getting really close onto. So we're not going to be adding a lot of detail to this. Um, so I think I could probably get away with even 12 sides on this and that might make things a little more manageable. So with 12 sides, let's convert this to editable poly. So once we've converted this, what I want to do is I want to uh, create a square bottom to this and this can be a little difficult at first um, but you just need to kind of think about how the objects need to be built okay so whenever you go from the cylindrical shape to a box shape um, you just need to think about it logically so with this particular object what we can do is we can just take these polygons right here along the bottom and we can extrude those straight down. So let me extrude these. And you can see here that we have the shape that we're looking for. So if I take that up, okay, or uh, back down to make this a little bit smaller, let me go to somewhere right around in here. Okay. And once we've done that, let's hit OK. And we want to straighten out the bottom. So I can do this by using the Make Planar tool. And I could use the Z direction to make that flat and it looks like it's probably going to be the Y direction. There we go. So now it's perfectly flat and then I can rotate that if I wanted to to where it's more along the angle of the garbage can and then I could also scale that out in the X direction to give it a little bit of flare like that we have in our reference image. So to bring that up really quickly let's kind of take a look at that and I know it's a little difficult to see but here you can see that it just comes up it's kind of like a triangle shape with a very rounded top. Now looking at this, there's a little bit of a lip here. So if we want that to go um, perfectly straight into the top and make it look seamless instead of having this dip outward, uh, we would probably need to go ahead and redo our extrusion. So you can hit undo, I believe, three or four times there. And let's grab these polygons and then extrude it. So extrude that down, go to somewhere right around in here, and then I'll use Make Planar in the Y. OK, 
Okay, and then it's in there, and then all we have to do is just scale this out in the x direction. Okay, and then you'll just put that into position there. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this up a little bit, and then take the entire object and pull that down. Okay, so now we have something along these lines. So we've created a shape from a cylinder, still using the box modeling technique. Okay. Uh, we're using all of the tools that we would normally use with box modeling, so uh, nothing really new. It's just a different primitive. So now what I want to do is I want to create the hole. So we've already had practice on doing this, so if you think back to those lessons, we would want to go ahead and take the two polygons on the outside edge here, and we would use inset. So I'm going to inset this to um, a pretty good amount. I want to give myself plenty of room for the bar to go through and this is going to be the bar that the lid swivels on so give it plenty of room there let's go down to maybe 0.6 and hit OK now that we have finished with that let's delete and then we're going to take the borders that are left behind and we'll just bridge okay so we've bridged that gap now what I want to do is I want to take the polygons on the outside and chamfer those to smooth this out now before I do that, let's go to polygon mode really quickly, and I'm going to hit F3 to go to wireframe, and select the polygons along the bottom. These polygons are hidden and really not needed, so I can get rid of those. Okay, And this is also going to help with the chamfering of our object. So let's go ahead and select the edges along the outside, and then also make sure that we get the edges on the inside. Okay and I'm talking about these loops right here and with those selected let's use chamfer so we'll take that chamfer amount up and you'll see that we get a very odd result and the reason for that is because our chamfer amount is too high so we'll take that down we want to make sure that we get a good edge on that that's that's readable from a far distance okay so maybe about 0.1 or 0.15 and then we might even add a segment in there in the middle okay to really smooth that out now looking at this, you can already see that we have a little bit of an issue. You can see here that we have uh, some odd topology. Now with this, we'll just have to fix that problem. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll hit OK. And then we're going to go to vertex mode and we're going to use target well to get rid of some of this, uh, these edges. So to start out, what I'm looking at is I see this continuous line and I want it to come down. Uh, right in uh, into this line here, this segment. Same thing with this segment right here. I want it to come down into here, just like this one is continuous. So to do this, let's go ahead and target weld from here to here, and then we'll target weld from here to there, and then what we can do is just simply get rid of that edge right there. Okay. Now before we do that, let's go ahead and target weld from here to here, and that'll make our life a little bit easier. So now we don't have to worry about that too much. Okay. So now I can take this edge and or that vertex and just pull that out like so. All right. So now that we've rounded that out, let's take this edge and let's pull that in. And now we have this triangle. Now we have the option to leave it right where it's at or what we could do is right click, target weld and target weld it from here to there. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay, and then you'll readjust your topology as needed. So there we've gotten rid of those loops. So let's try that again. Let's do target weld. I'm going to go from here to here and up. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of that in there. Okay. Take your vertices and just pull those out a little bit to get that roundness again. So if you need to get a different angle on that, just to see what that looks like, you can pull that out. All right, very good. So I'm going to pull this one out a little bit more too. Okay, so now we have that shape. And let's continue that process on this side. So as you're seeing here, we've got a, a, a pretty good workflow um, happening at this point. So the workflow, whoops, looks like we target welded to the wrong place. Uh, the workflow is to build out the primitive, 
get the shapes that you want, okay, the larger shapes, and then start building in some of the smaller shapes. Once those have been built, um, you can come in and you can start to add segments to create the smaller forms, and then start smoothing uh, the edges, like chamfering those edges and making it more realistic, and then come in and do any cleanup that is necessary. All right, so just about finished here. Just want to pull these points out, make that a little round, or a little more round, I should say. There we go. And then I believe we have all of those. So now we've retopologized that, and we've cleaned up those segments. Made that uh, very easy to work with there. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and duplicate that to the other side. So to do this, we'll hold down Shift, and I'm going to drag this over in the Y. And I'm going to place that about where it should be on the other side. Now, whenever we clone, I want to make sure that this is an instance. So that way, if I make any changes to one, it'll make the change to the other, because I want these elements to be symmetrical. So let's go to our top view. And looking at that, it's right there on the other side of that line. And I want to do the same thing on this one. So now that I have both of those objects completed, we now have the mounts for our lid. So in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and we're going to build the bar that goes across and then start building the actual lid that goes over the top of the dumpster. And I'll see you then.